Hello friends. Today we are going to discuss about delusions. How they are formed, classification, phenomenology, neurobiology and treatment of delusions. I am Dr. Suresh Badadmat, Professor of Psychiatry, working at National Institute of Mental Health and Neurosciences, Bangalore. In this video, I will be defining delusions, what are the different types of delusions, how they are formed, what are the theories behind delusions, neurobiology and treatment. Let's understand the word delusion. This word was taken from Latin, the word delude. That means playing or mocking, cheating or defrauding. The German equivalent word is wahn. That means it's a whim, false opinion or fancy. From the time immemorial, delusions has been taken as the basic characteristics of madness. It was considered to be mad was to be deluded. The first time with regard to history of psychiatry, Carl Jasper was the first to describe and explain delusion in his book called as General Psychopathology. This book is an iconic book with regard to phenomenology. This was published in 1913. Carl Jasper regarded delusion as a perverted view of reality, incorrigibly held, having three important components. They are held with unusual conviction, they are not amenable to logic. The absurdity or errorness of their content is manifest to other people. This is how Jasper described with regard to delusion. Another important definition came from Hamilton in 1978. He defined delusion as a false unshakable belief which arises from internal morbid process. It is easily recognizable and it is out of keeping with the person's education and cultural background. This is the commonest accepted definition regarding delusion. Further, in 2003, Sims also defined delusion. According to Sims, it is a false unshakable belief or an idea out of keeping with the patient's education, cultural and social background held with extraordinary conviction and subjective certainty. In DSM-5, it is defined as delusions or a fixed beliefs that are not amenable to change in light of conflicting evidence. Similarly, CTP describes delusion as a false belief that is firmly held despite the objective and obvious contradictory proof or evidence and despite the fact other members of the culture do not share the belief. This is how delusions have been defined. Let's understand the characteristics of this delusion. As you know, the delusion being false fixed belief. These are dynamic in nature. Invariably the delusions, they wax and waning courses seen. This phenomena may worsen during stress or certain situation with regarding cues, sleep deprivation or substance use or intoxication. Delusions are very difficult to quantify. At present, there are no lab tests such as blood test or any imaging study like CT scan, MRI to detect the person as delusion. That means it is more of eliciting this information through clinical interviewing. Hence, diagnosis of delusions that is basically a psychopathology is done through an experienced psychiatrist by clinical evaluation. Invariably, it is assessed through phenomenological interview by mental status examination. What do you mean by phenomenology? It is the study of subjective experience of the patient. That is, 
what is the subjective experience? It is the mental status examination. What does the patient feel and think about the process and the environment around them? Although delusions are defined as false, fixed, unshakable belief, but the patient behaves in a manner of validating or require validation of his belief or searching for evidence. Let's understand a little bit in deeper. Suppose the patient has delusion of infidelity, that is morbid jealousy. Here he will be collecting evidence against his wife that she is unfaithful. Although we say it is false, unshakable belief, somewhere the patient wants to confirm for her infidelity by looking at various evidences. Similarly, delusion of persecution. Here the patient starts looking for the persecutor. Who are these people? He will often go near the window and look for anybody is coming. He does not know who are those people, even if he knows, but he does not know why they are going to kill him. Invariably, he will be checking with other family members and others to know whether the person is persecuting him or not. Similarly with delusion of reference. Here, he feels that people are talking about him. Invariably, the patient often goes to the people and asks why they are talking about him and what they are talking about him. Similarly, with regard to somatic delusions, many a time they feel they have cancer. They often go to the doctor and request for various investigation to validate their belief. Similarly, many a time, body dysmorphophobic delusions, they feel that their nose is not appropriate or the lips are thick. Many a time they go and stand in front of mirror to confirm their belief for many hours together. So that means, although by definition we call this as false, unshakable belief, somewhere the patient requires validation of this belief. Hence, they look for evidence in various form. The delusion is a symptom by itself. That means, in schizophrenia, delusion is a symptom, but it can also be a diagnostic category by itself, like Persistent delusional disorder, a single delusion where the person can be diagnosed as a single disorder. Delusions are seen both in organic condition, such as medical conditions, maybe endocrinological deficiency or excessive presence of hormones, neurological conditions like epilepsy, or maybe even encephalitis, and in various psychiatric disorder that is functional. That means delusions, although a symptom, it is a trans diagnostic. It is present in neurological condition, neurosurgical condition, medical condition and psychiatric condition. These delusions varies across population. For, for example, all depressed patients may not have delusion. Or all bipolar disorder patients may not have delusions. Similarly, all schizophrenia patients may not have same delusion. That means it varies across the population and also it varies within population. That means in this episode of depression, the patient may have delusion of guilt. In the next episode, he may or may not have delusions. That means it varies within the population also. That means it is a symptom can occur across diagnosis within the same person. Whenever there is a relapse, he may or may not have the delusions. As I mentioned, delusion being a trans diagnostic, it is seen in organic conditions like delirium, encephalitis, head injury, seizures, dementia, substance induced psychosis, substance withdrawal, substance intoxication, schizophrenia, acute psychosis, bipolar disorder, major depression, and various other medical conditions. Now let's look into the dimensionality of delusion. Is it categorical in nature or is it a dimension? Carl Jasper distinguished this delusional continuum into four important categories. He believed it is a spectrum in nature. It is a dimensional in nature. That means it starts with a normal belief and ends with a delusion. The first category is normal belief. Everyone in the population have their own belief system and many people do agree with this and they may also follow this. Example, 
such as belief in God. So it's a normal belief. Although you may call it as a false and fix, false fixed and shakable belief. But invariably many people agree on this. This is normal belief. Over valid idea. Here the person believes certain political parties are the best. Here this idea is fixated because of investment in emotion. The third one is delusional like idea. Here the idea is formed fully and enters into the patient's mind. Finally the primary delusion. The last two parts that is delusion like idea and primary delusions are the delusions which requires intervention. Now let's differentiate between delusion and overvalued idea. Delusions are false fixed belief with extraordinary conviction, incorrigible in nature and people within the community within the same social background do not adhere to this or do not believe it. Whereas overvalued idea because of the associated tone of failing that is the effect one thought gets precedence over the others. Invariably overvalued idea many of the people do share this. For example political ideology. Here the overvalued idea may have a content which may be almost near to normalcy whereas delusions are maybe impossible and also implausible. It may be against the nature. For example, patient may say, I can control the moon and sun which is simply impossible and not only impossible but is implausible whereas overvalued idea will be acceptable in nature. At the same time, many people in the society may adhere to these ideas. Invariably delusions will be associated with various hallucinations, behaviors, affect changes and invariably delusions are dysfunctional in nature. Whereas overvalued idea invariably will not be associated with various psychopathology like hallucination and invariably there will be no dysfunction. That is how you differentiate between delusions and overvalued ideas. Further, Jasper also explained about primary delusions. That is, these are unmediated by thoughts. That means it is a primary. It is immediate, directly experienced by the patient rather than he believes in these thoughts. It is ununderstandable. That means they are de novo in nature. It, acts, it occurs in the moment of a second and the patient experiences it implies a change in the total, totality of the understanding connection with the patient's personality. That means primary delusions are seen in a person who is normal and within a second he gets this idea which he experiences that something is going to happen to him. That experience phenomena which is ununderstandable considering his personality, they are called as primary delusion. What is secondary delusions? They are mediated by the thought described as a developed, evolved based on the thinking and working through. That means here secondary delusions are those delusions which are seen maybe because of drug abuse, maybe already has developed schizophrenia or else bipolar disorder. In the background of such a psychopathology, he develops a delusion. They are all secondary delusions. Further, Jasper also explained primary delusion is a delusion which he experiences for the first time. It is an experiential account. That's how the Jasper has told. It is not a mere thought. It's an experiential account. He feels that. Here, the experience of the meaning is implicit. That means all perception and it is the distortion of the implicit meaning which is primary delusion. That means he has to feel it. He has to experience it for the first time in his life. That is primary delusion. This direct experience of meaning while perception itself remains normal and unchanged. That means the patient sees a normal perception but he gives a morbid pathological inference to it. That experiencing that account for the first time de novo 
is called as primary delusion. Now let's classify delusion based upon the content. If you look at the DSM-5, they have classified various delusions such as persecutory delusion, people are going to kill me, grandiose delusion, that is I am God, jealousy, morbid jealousy or delusion of infidelity, delusion of erotomania, that is somebody loves me, delusion of love, somatic delusion, that is delusion of parasitosis, bizarre delusion, Capgara syndrome, Fragoli syndrome, re reduplicative paramnesia, mirror self misidentification. These misidentification syndrome, I've done a separate video. Please go through my YouTube channel to know about misidentification syndrome. Further, delusion of ill health, that is, my child is having severe cancer syndrome or maybe incurable insanity. Hypochondriacal delusion that have cancer. Delusion of dysmorphophobia. My nose is ugly. My lips are thick. I look very ugly. Delusion of grandiosity that is with regard to ability, identity and power. Delusion of guilt that is unpardonable sin I have done. So I need to be punished. Nihilistic delusion that is my heart doesn't exist. My liver doesn't exist. Delusion of enormity. You are the patient who is suffering from invariably by depression. May say that if I cough, the whole world will enter into hurricane or maybe into a storm. Delusion of poverty. I have lost every property. I have lost everything. So that is delusion of property. These are the various classification based upon the content of delusion. Now let's look into various types of delusions based upon predominant factors. What do you mean by predominant factors? Here, the delusions occurring because of neurological dysfunction. It can be encephalitis. It can be because of autoimmune disorders, especially with regard to various receptors like NMDA receptors, where delusion of persecution can be seen. Predominantly because of medical dysfunction. It can be metabolic encephalopathy or endocrine disorders, predominantly because of mood dysfunction, severe depression can produce various types of delusion, predominantly because of perceptual dysfunction, that is secondary elaboration of auditory hallucination. Here the patient reports that I am hearing voices, people are discussing about me, hence I believe people are looking at me and talking about me, that is secondary elaboration of auditory Hallucination, delusion of reference. Predominantly cognitive dysfunction based. Here the patient has dementia and may have various delusion. It may be from delusion of persecution, reference, delusion of infidelity and various other delusion. Finally, functional, that is basically persistent delusional disorder. Here, various types of delusions which are monosymptomatic such as delusion of persecution which is very common, delusion of infidelity, delusion of love. These are the individual disorder which we can consider as functional. Although many a time even uh, severe psychiatric disorder like schizophrenia may have combination of various delusions. Now let's discuss about various types of delusions based upon the onset. Based upon primary, that is the first time which is occurring Secondary delusions based upon already existing morbid pathology or because of drugs, maybe neurological condition, neurolog neurosurgical condition. Snyder in 1959 suggested four forms of primary delusions. That is, he spoke about primary delusion being delusional mood and the second one is delusional memories in that he classified into delusional perception and sudden delusional idea. Let's discuss about primary delusion. What is delusional mood? Here the patient has the knowledge that there is something going on around him that concerns him but he does not know what it is. He is unable to pinpoint what it is. Let's understand what does the patient say. If a patient for the first time this delusional mood occurs that is it is a primary delusion. 
when it occurs he feels and he says that something is happening around me something is strange something conspiracy against me is occurring environment around me is changing what is that i am unable to know people are behaving strangely i don't know why but i am unable to pinpoint what is that i am very concerned about this this is how the delusional mood looks here the patient will be restless he does not know what is happening around him but he is unable to pinpoint what is wrong the next one is sudden delusional idea here the patient reports a delusion appears fully formed in the patient mind this is sometimes known as autoconscious delusion that means the patient says that they are of a royal descent because when they were taken to a military parade as a small child the king saluted them hence he believes he is from a royal family in this the classical is a completely fully formed delusion occurs there is nothing called as delusional mood in this patient a completely fully formed delusion occurs for the first time in his life who is completely normal then it is called as sudden delusional idea then this is a sudden delusional idea because the delusion is contained within the memory and there is no two memberedness let's understand what is this two memberedness with regard to primary delusion here the delusional perception should be there delusional perception is the attribution of a new meaning usually in the sense of self reference to a normally perceived object the the new meaning cannot be understood as arising from the patient's affective state or attitudes that is it has to be de novo the last proviso of de novo is very essential the person who is completely normal suddenly sees something and gives a meaning to that and invariably it is self reference in nature then we call it as delusional perception here the perception of a normal event which is interpreted as a morbid although you may call it as a delusional misinterpretation but since it is occurring for the first time we call it as delusional perception if it occurs in a schizophrenia patient already you have diagnosed it and he gives a morbid explanation to a small event then you call it as delusional misinterpretation let's understand suppose a patient says i saw an aeroplane flying above my house and i knew the devils are going to attack my family members suppose this is the first time it occurs and is completely normal then it is called as delusional perception if the same thing occurs in a person who is having schizophrenia from 2023 and he says the same thing i saw an aeroplane flying above my house and i believe devils are going to attack my house or my family then it is called as delusional misinterpretation the important difference is it is de novo it is occurring for the first time that is primary delusion that is delusional perception there is a two memberedness he saw the aeroplane and made an interpretation that his family will be killed whereas in the background of schizophrenia it will be considered as delusion of misinterpretation delusional perception if the patient says they are of royal descent because they remember that the spoon they used as a child had a crown on it this is really a delusional perception because there is a memory and also the delusional significance the two memberedness along with the do you know this is the example given in fish psychopathology which from where i have taken it snyder in 1959 emphasized the importance of this two memberedness to diagnose delusional perceptions this delusional perception is very important because it clearly indicates diagnosis of schizophrenia here there is a link between a perceived object 
to the subject, the perception of the object and giving a meaning to this perception as a morbid and with self-reference. Hence, this two-memberedness is very essential for delusional perception and the diagnosis of schizophrenia. Now, let's discuss about the morbidity of the belief, that is, how this delusion can be assessed with regard to severity. The factors you need to assess is to know the conviction, the degree to which the patient believes this conviction, how much does he act on it, what are the extension of this, the degree to which the delusional belief involves the patient life, how many family members are involved, how many members in the environment are involved, how much it is bizarre to the degree to which this belief system which can be accepted in the culture or it is completely against the nature. That is how far it from reality is the bizarreness. Disorganization, the degree to which the delusional beliefs are internal, consistent, logical and systematized. If the patient invariably having a monosymptomatic delusion and personality is very well preserved, then it will be systematic delusion. What is the pressure? The degree to which the patient is preoccupied and concerned about this belief. Affective response to the degree to which the patient's emotions are invested on this delusion and the deviant behavior with regard to delusion. Patients may act on this delusion. They may become violent. They may hurt somebody. They may stalk. They may plan. They may even kill people because of this delusion. Various behavioral responses with regard to delusion. Acting out, safety behavior, planning, stalking, violence, aggression, writing complaints, writing emails against them, posting on social media, abusing people, abusing authorities, vindictive behavior, and many a time, these people will be highly litigious. They may drag the people to the court. What is the prevalence of this delusion? To know the prevalence, it is very difficult to study because based upon the population you study, whether it is medical condition, neurological condition, neurosurgical condition, are you seeing in general population or else in psychiatric hospital? Based upon the study of the population, it varies. In this regard, there was a publication done by Vanos and his colleagues in 2008 and this was published in Psychological Medicine. The title of the study was Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis of Psychosis Continuum. Evidence for Psychosis Proneness, Persistence, Impairment Model of Psychotic Disorder. Although the delusions have not been completely studied in this study, but they looked into what are psychotic phenomena and how common in this. This systematic review looked into psychotic experience and median prevalence rate was 5%, my dear friends, and incidence rate was 3%. That means, we are talking about a psychotic phenomena ranging from 5 to 5% 5 in prevalence and 3% in incidence. Now let's look into factors involved in morbidity of delusions based upon the premorbid personality, how the person is generally worried about, how much time is spent on preoccupation, how much is mood disturbance, how unstable he is, what is the cognitive capacity of the person, if there is disturbed sleep, how much is the anomalous experiences, reasoning biases, safety behaviors, negative self-belief and a propensity towards exaggerated experience of a stimulus salience, that is aberrant salience. Based upon all this, the patient's behavior and morbidity can be explained. Daniel Freeman in 2016 discussed that strong belief with regard to threat perception, 
which was published in Lancet Psychiatry, he spoke about how much is the worry, negative self-belief, anomalous experience, sleep dysfunction, reasoning bias, and safety behaviors. Based upon this, the belief can be explained. Let's understand how these delusions are formed. According to Klaus Conrad, he discussed about five stages of formation of delusion. Klaus Conrad was a German psychiatrist. He proposed five stages of delusion formation. It starts with trauma, apophony, anastrophe, consolidation and residuum. This classification accounts for prodrome, that is trauma, and also early psychosis experience. That means, Conrad has discussed about prodrome long back. That means, before the delusion starts, the patient is slightly confused and feels something is going around him. That is trauma. Let's look into all five stages. Trauma. That is delusional mood. Something is happening around him. And he feels there is strange things happening and he does not know what is it. He is unable to pinpoint what is that. That is delusional mood. That is trauma. Apophony. A search for and finding of a new meaning to this psychological event. That is something happening around him. What is that he is unable to understand? He is trying to find a new meaning. That new meaning is called as apophony. Anastrotrophy, that is, heightening of the psychosis at this period. He is highly fearful. Affective response will be at the top of the notch. He believes something is happening and he believes that somebody is going to kill him. Delusion of reference will be there. Consolidation, forming of a new world, that is, psychopathology world. He believes there are persecutors. They have planned something against him, against his family. And a new meaning is given to his world. And finally, residuum, that is eventually autistic state develops. These are the five different stages of formation of delusion. Now, how does this delusion resolve? That is, fate of delusions. Some of the delusions on treatment or without treatment many a time, may, resol may resolution can occur completely. Partial recovery is seen. Sometimes fleeting delusions, especially in various personality disorders, maybe in transient acute psychotic episode, severe stressful reaction. Fleeting delusions are known. They occur for a momentary period and vanish. Some of them may develop encapsulation. Unless you talk about the delusion, you will not come to know that this person has psychosis. That means they are well encapsulated. On treatment they do well. But they do have delusions. Finally, elaborating and comprehensive formation. Some of the patients may develop complete pseudo-community where he believes there is a parallel world which exists. And he also has some role to play there and the real world is completely different, that elaboration may develop. So, delusion may be completely cured to formation of treatment-resistant, elaborative, comprehensive delusion may occur. Now, let's look into various theories of delusions. The first and the foremost, the Sigmund Freud. Sigmund Freud talked about delusions and he explained based upon the psychodynamic theory. He said, the delusions manifest because of unresolved conflict between individual psychological agencies like id, ego and superego. His explanation was, in the context of repressed or denial of homosexual impulses by using various immature or psychotic defense mechanisms. Although, during the early part of 19th century, psychodynamic theory appealed to many people. But at this point of time, it is very difficult to understand this denial 
or repressed homosexuality causes psychosis. Second was anthropological theory by Roberts. He proposed three stages of delusions, pre-psychotic, acute psychotic, elaboration into delusions. If you look at this diagram, it clearly talks about three phases. Pre-psychotic is there is a predisposing factor that may be genetic in nature and there is an event which is a stressful that is precipitating factor. This leads to acute prodromal state that is delusional mood, mood and finally attribution phase where he is making a new meaning because of this experience. Finally, the consolidation or elaboration of these delusions. Next comes the biological theory. This is dopamine dysfunction hypothesis. The onset of psychotic symptoms has been largely attributed to altered dopamine function in the brain, that is, hyperdopaminergic state. Here, increased dopamine is seen in various parts of the brain, such as substantia nigra, dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex, ventromedial prefrontal cortex, ventral striatum, hippocampus, and mesolimbic pathway. Here, Dopamine is present in excessive. This leads to delusion. This hypodominogic state also have been implicated with regard to decreased attention, mood disturbance, motivation and interpersonal activity. That means they also occur along with delusions. Further, head injury can cause delusions. Viral Encephalitis in the brain, meningitis, drug abuse, drug withdrawal, drug intoxication, Parkinsonism, medications, post-epileptic psychosis, tumor, various endocrinological disorders, metabolic syndrome can cause delusion. Further, there are various neuroimaging studies which discussed about delusions. Let's discuss about various areas which have been noted in an important article published by Ajman and his colleagues and it is published in Neuro Scientist Journal. In these figures, you can see the hyperactive areas are shown as red and hypoactive areas shown as blue. In the top, you can see left dorso, lateral prefrontal cortex is hypoactive. Hyperactive is superior temporal gyrus, left inferior and middle temporal gyri. At the same time, you can also see the medial part of it, which is posterior cingulate cortex, anterior cingulate cortex. Further, bilateral fusiform gyri and left parohippocampal gyrus. Similarly, if you can see the capgras delusion, reference delusion, persecuted delusion. Various different parts of the brain has been found in neuroimaging studies. Even in Capgras delusions, you can see left posterior cingulate cortex is hypoactive and left retrosplenal cortex is hyperactive. Further dysfunction in the connectivity of the left posterior superior temporal sulcus with left superior frontal gyrus. So, this causes Capgras syndrome. Further, delusion of reference. You can see caudate nuclei, ventral striatum, medial prefrontal cortex, posterior cingulate cortex, precuneus, inferior middle temporal gyri, medial prefrontal regions are seen as a hyperactive state in the brain. With regard to paranoid delusion, you can see lateral orbitofrontal cortex, posterior cingulate cortex, anterior cingulate cortex, ventral striatum and visual processing regions. These are the areas which have been found to be either hyperactive or hypoactive in nature. Imaging studies with regard to structural studies have found that left inferior frontal gyrus with regard to error monitoring has been implicated. That means both, not only imaging studies, at the same time, 
cognitive studies have implicated. Similarly, with regard to functional studies, the anterior insula cortex and anterior cingulate cortex are activated during errors in performance and error awareness. So that means there is something wrong in the brain that we are able to know. But what are the exact mechanisms of various delusions? Is it based on content or it is it based on the onset or it is it based on the etiological factors? What are the areas? What are the neurohormones? Is very difficult to say at this point of time. Let's look into cognitive theories. First and the foremost is perceptual cognitive theories. The salience theory in which delusion arises because of the imbalanced attention. That means the excessive attention is paid to the idiosyncratic self-referenced threat perception aspects of situation and ignoring the relevant neutralizing information in the environment. That means invariably the people who have delusions have high preoccupation, they think a lot, but at the same time they focus on certain part of a exaggerated threat perception. That is salience theory. But they at the same time they ignore the relevant neutralizing information. Further, it was discussed as a two-factor theory, salience and faulty cognitions. These two leads to jumping into conclusion. That is, jumping into conclusion is a tendency in which deluded person invariably takes less time reviewing the information and take less time to make a decision. This leads to faulty logics which are held with a great conviction and emotional investment. That is, jumping into conclusion is commonly seen in a person with delusions. Now let's look into various cognitive biases. The cognitive biases are explained based upon the triggering event which causes increased arousal in the individuals. And who, because of this triggering event, which causes an experience, which is a state of confusion, and driving him to make a meaning out of this anomalous experience. And that person makes a meaning out of it. During this process, he may jump into conclusion, he may give attribution, he may misinterpret, or he try to make a sense out of it. And many a time, they may lead into cognitive biases. Hence, cognitive biases can be understood as a dysfunctional thinking pattern that lead to incorrect inference and abnormal perception. That means, it is a dysfunctional thinking pattern that leads to incorrect inferences and abnormal perception. Here, although the perceptual abnormality is not there, but he perceives it as a threat. In this regard, there is an important publication done by Rossi and Anna, which was published in 2022 in a journal called as Early Intervention Psychiatry. This was a systematic review titled as Thinking Biases and Their Role in Persecutory Delusion. In this study, they did a systematic review, collected various articles, and finally, 25 studies were included in the review. In this, they found 18 different cognitive biases which were found across 25 studies. One of the most commonly studied biases was jumping to conclusion which refers to the tendency to make decision on the basis of insufficient information. Invariably, jumping to conclusion has been found in 40 to 70 percent of patients with delusions. Without any information, they take a decision and it will be invariably in delusion in nature. Second one is attributional biases. A negative external personal attributional style, meaning 
that they tend to attribute the causality of negative events to other people rather than to the circumstances or themselves. Here, their locus of control is external. Anything negative thing happens, they believe there is a persecutor who is doing it. That is attributional biases. Hence, it is defined as a negative external personal attributional style, meaning that they tend to attribute the causality of negative events to other people rather than the circumstances or themselves. That means many things happen because of my circumstances or environment around me. But anything goes wrong, I will attribute either my superior or maybe people around me are responsible for it. That means he blames others. The next one is need for closure, which refers to the desire to accept any explanatory framework due to an inability to tolerate uncertainty. That means anything which occurs around his environment, he wants to understand why it happens, what is the self-significance, and he need to make an idea what is that and what is that meaning to him. Biases against disconfirmatory evidences. This involves tendency to neglect evidence that opposes one's view. The patient believes that people are trying to persecute him. But at the same time, he does not have any evidence that in the past five years, nobody attacked him. That means it is the involves of tendency to neglect evidence that opposes one's view. Similarly, bias against confirmatory evidence refers an hindrance in accepting information that is consistent with a true interpretation. Here, the patient says he is the God. He has delusion of grandiosity. But the evidence says his bank balance is zero. He does not have any power. He does not have any identity or functional role. Still, he believes he is God. Other cognitive biases, belief of inflexibility, attentional biases, interpretational biases, memory biases and misperception, misperception biases. As the name suggests, various biases have been given. If you look at to the general population, invariably many of them will have various cognitive biases, cognitive distortions. That doesn't mean that they are deluded. In this systematic review, after looking into various 17 different cognitive biases, they clearly said that hostility and trustworthiness judgment biases appear to be specific to persecutory delusion. That means if a person has hostility and difficulty in believing or trusting others, further jumping to conclusion, self-serving attributional biases and belief of inflexibility was proposed to be present in various delusional subtypes. That means they are not specific to one delusion. Hostility biases and need for closure were proposed to be contributing to the genesis and maintenance of delusions across various content. This is the flowchart which clearly says there is a triggering event it may be major life event, ongoing stress, sleep deprivation, trauma, illicit drugs. Because of the triggering event, there is a heightened emotions, anxiety, worry, fearfulness. Because of this triggering event and heightened emotion, because of cognitive biases, that is jumping to conclusion, confirmatory biases, failure to consider alternatives, this internal and external events, there may be discrepancy, negativity, social significance. The patient starts searching for a meaning. Why is this anomalous experience? And finally, he comes to a conclusion. That is how the persecutory delusions are formed. This is how the beautiful explanation has been given in various journals and also various articles. So my dear friends, the cognitive biases, the maintenance of delusional thinking requires a two-sided approach. That is, information supporting the delusion, that is confirmatory evidences. At the same time, 
avoidance of evidences which are not supporting the delusion non confirmatory evidence that means patient with the delusions invariably will be focusing on the evidence which supports their delusion but at the same time they ignore those evidences which go against their belief system finally the integrative theory that is four factor model has been proposed that is biological model cognitive model psychological integrative component that is integrating into patient's world view into the patient's world and a psychological maintenance component that is into patient life so these are the various four important components have been integrated to understand delusion at this point of time because we are unable to know the exact cause of delusion at this point of time although we know there is various structural and functional impairment in the brain at the same time we know various cognitive biases cognitive deficits but we do not what is that exact it is like a delusional mood at this point of time yes something is wrong in the brain but we are unable to pinpoint hence the integrative model hence there was an important article by fards and his colleagues published in lancet psychiatry which talked about the delusions with normal sense of reality and altered sense of reality what is the current explanatory model and phenomenological updates they talked about secondary delusions and primary delusions at this point of time we are trying to make sense out of it like a deluded people hence my dear friend at this point of time we do not know the exact precise cause of delusions to summarize again this is a publication from lancet the strong belief under threat is there should be a excessive preoccupation worry negative self belief there is an anomalous experience because of the triggering event precipitating because of various stressful situation life events leading to various sleep dysfunction alter circadian rhythm in the background of reasoning bias or cognitive bias safety behaviors leads to delusions my dear friends what are the treatment many of the patients with delusion rarely they come to treatment they have poor insight they believe every person is trying to kill them they also think that the doctor is trying to kill them the nurse is trying to kill them invariably the person with delusional disorder who have a monosymptomatic delusion rarely will come to treatment even if they come it is because the family members are forcing them secondary delusions like delusions because of neurological condition medical condition neurosurgical condition we need to treat aggressively the etiological factor it may be epilepsy head injury encephalitis autoimmune disorder they need to be treated if you treat them invariably delusions may disappear with regard to mood state that is if the person has severe depression we need to treat the depression and also delusions hence various antipsychotics mood stabilizers antidepressant electroconvulsive therapy and cognitive behavioral therapy has been found to be useful in treatment of delusions patient with delusions are known to be litigious they may drag you to the court they may give complaint to the medical board they may give complaint to the mental health review board and they may write complaints to various higher authorities they may post in social media invariably they will defame the family members or the higher authorities or with whom they have delusion against hence before you venture into treating a person with delusion know the mental health legislation know your jurisdiction what does the law say about it how to go about treating these such patients what are the consent requirement how to do capacity assessment and if the patient has delusion but his capacity is well preserved in such a scenario you need to explain the family members of the patient what can be done how to take help from the legal authorities 
how to go about treatment at times these persons with delusion may become violent hence you need to look for safety at the same time help the family members to be safe and take help from the legal authorities to conclude delusion is a symptom and it can also be a diagnosis itself such as persistent delusional disorder it is prevalent across psychiatric diagnosis neurological diagnosis medical diagnosis and neurological diagnosis or neurosurgical treating a delusion alone is very challenging persons with delusions may become violent invariably they are violent towards their own family members and against whom the delusions are there at this point of time rights based legislation across the world prevents treating persons with delusions because most of the legislations surround around rights of the persons with mental illness if the person has capacity you do not have any right to treat them having delusion does not qualify for intense insanity defense that means if a person has a delusion and he commits a crime he may not get a delusion of he may not get a insanity defense in the court of law so my dear friends treating a person with delusion alone is a biggest challenge and many a time psychiatrist finds it very difficult to treat a person with delusion alone however a person with schizophrenia a person who has mood disorder and delusion it is very easy to treat a person who has persistent delusional disorder it is very difficult to treat them i have made a separate video with regard to delusional disorder please visit my youtube channel to know about delusional disorder thank you very much for giving your valuable time stay safe